Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today's topic is jaundice. So most people will know that the causes of jaundice are typically split into being prehepatic, hepatic or post-hepatic, dependent on where the actual pathology lies. Before we go any further, let's have a think about exactly what happens to bilirubin in terms of it being generated, metabolized and eventually excreted. So first and foremost, the breakdown of red blood cells gives rise to bilirubin. So this bilirubin will then travel to the liver where it gets conjugated. So that means that it gets uh, put together with glucuronic acid by the action of an enzyme, which essentially results in the production of conjugated bilirubin, which is soluble. So the conjugated bilirubin will then pass through into the GI tract. Once it's in the GI tract, some of it will be converted via the action of some of the colonic bacteria into urobilinogen. And there's two things that can happen to urobilinogen at this stage. So some of it can be converted again within the GI tract into stercobilin, and that's a brown substance which essentially makes your feces brown. However, some part of the urobilinogen will also be reabsorbed via the GI tract and be excreted through the kidneys as it is water-soluble. So an important point to remember at this stage is that the presence of urobilinogen within the urine is normal because it suggests that you're able to produce conjugated bilirubin in the liver. It's making its way into the GI tract where it encounters some of this GI bacteria which converts it into urobilinogen. Some of that gets reabsorbed and excreted by the kidneys. So that's a normal finding. So based on this simple diagram, we can figure out what could cause a high level of bilirubin within the blood, which is what jaundice is. So prehepatic, it's essentially just anything that, that increases the breakdown of red blood cells. So that includes autoimmune hemolytic anemia, sickle cell disease, G6PD deficiency, and malaria. There's various other causes, but those are just a few examples. As for hepatic causes of jaundice, anything that impairs the function of the liver would cause hepatic jaundice. So that includes cirrhosis, hepatitis, various medications as well, and also Gilbert syndrome, which is a relatively common benign condition in which the ability of the liver to conjugate bilirubin is compromised. And finally, post-hepatic causes of jaundice, it's essentially anything that can cause an obstruction to the, to the biliary tract. So that includes quite commonly gallstones, but also pancreatic cancer, cholangiocarcinomas, and uh, more rare conditions like PSC and PPC. So one thing that tends to get quite confusing sometimes is interpreting the various levels of conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin in the blood and whether there's pale or dark stools. So hopefully this will clear that up for you. So with prehepatic jaundice, the main problem is right at the start. There's too much bilirubin being generated by the breakdown of red blood cells, and that exceeds the capacity of the liver to metabolize and excrete that bilirubin. So in that case, you get an increase in conjugated bilirubin, and you, do, you get a normal conjugated bilirubin level. As for the urine and feces, the urine will be normal because unconjugated bilirubin is insoluble, and hence it will not be excreted in the urine. Furthermore, the liver and the rest of the GI tract is intact, so there's no reason for your urine to be dark. Similarly, the liver will still be functioning at its own rate to produce conjugated bilirubin, which gets excreted into the GI tract, and so your stools should be normal. As for hepatic jaundice, you can get an increase in unconjugated and conjugated bilirubin. The urine is likely to be dark because the conjugated bilirubin that leaks back into the circulation from the liver is water soluble and hence it can be excreted in the urine and it gives it a dark color. And the stools may be slightly pale, it depends very much on the output of conjugated bilirubin by this liver. And finally, post-hepatic jaundice. So this is due to an obstruction within the biliary tree. So in this case, the unconjugated bilirubin level should be normal because there's been no change in the rate of breakdown of red blood cells or the ability of the liver to conjugate it. However, some of the conjugated bilirubin that's coming out of the liver may seep back into the circulation and hence your blood level of conjugated bilirubin is likely to be raised. And like I mentioned, conjugated bilirubin is water-soluble and pigmented, so you'd expect the urine to be dark. 
And finally, given that this conjugated bilirubin isn't making its way into the GI tract, and hence you don't get any of that conversion into urobilinogen and stercobilinogen, you'll get very pale stools. And your urine will be negative for urobilinogen. Thank you.